Selling and Crafting Family. I'm Angela Loaf. I forgot who I was. And <laughs> we have the fabulous Jerry Granada. Hey, Jerry, how are you? Hi, I'm Jerry Granada. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just, I've been thinking about uh, these lips that I made yesterday. And I was like, that I was like, my name is no, it's Angela. <laughs> you can put them up to your face. That would be so cute. <laughs> I know. So yeah, everyone said we should do this as a mask. Nice. So oh, I'm so happy. Idea. I'm, I'm looking right now yesterday, Facebook was not behaving and our live show was only on uh, YouTube. So it's working. Yay. Everyone. <laughs> Wolfpack's very happy today. <laughs> So, I will Jerry, hope that my network acts accordingly. <laughs> yes. How how are you? How is everybody? When everybody who's never been here before, we have a lot of fun here. I'm a brand ambassador for brother. Jerry's an educator for brother. We've got a couple of fun Valentine things for you to work on today using the scan and cut. And uh, Jerry will show you his project. But if you've never been here, say hi. Say where you're from. I'm in snowy Southwest Michigan. And Jerry, <laughs> you don't want to hear where I'm from. It's 80 degrees here in Palm Springs, California. I'm in shorts and sandals. Oh, God. I know. Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that just sounds fabulous right now. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. There's, it's, there is snow on the mountains, so it's beautiful. The mountains are beautiful, but I'm in shorts. So. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm a little jealous on that. I know. So show, okay, so I showed, anybody who missed yesterday's show, uh, Facebook wasn't behaving and it's on YouTube and I also put it on my blog, which I'll make sure I post, you just, all you gotta do is go to AngelaWolf.com, but we made these great lips. How and cute. A pouch, and then I put candies in them. Here, I'll throw you one. <laughs> and awesome. make sure, don't let Hercules eat that while he's napping. I know. I know. We got to talk about Hercules. So if you if you all hear any kind of snoring in the background, it's not me. Um, about three months ago, and some of you will be familiar with the story. About three months ago, we adopted a rescue English bulldog from a, a, a rescue in Southern California. And he is um, very noisy. He's very attached to me. He's chosen me as his person. So he won't let me out of his sight. So he's kind of off in the back of my sewing room right down here. Um, and he'll be snoring away. So, <laughs> Anybody that was here last time, there was everybody on here that could hear the snoring. All of a sudden I was like, what is that? And then some people were like, I thought that was my husband. Somebody else thought it was their dog. It was so funny. So I'm Everyone sure we're going to get to have some of that. Laughing and saying it's cute. And of course I'm horrified because I'm like, no, I don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry, show the cute project that you're going to show everyone today. This is adorable. It's a Valentine's Day card. A lot of you may not realize you can sew on paper. Um, so this has a lot of, this has stitching on it. This has scan and cut projects. This has bling on it. Those of you who know me know I'm the king of bling. Uh, it has fabric. The hearts are fabric um, and paper as well. So I'm going to combine a bunch of elements here um, to be able to show you how to do this. And it's quick and easy. This is going to be awesome. And actually, everyone was trying to think of some fun things to go with the lips. They said put cards in there. So now you can put a card and stick that sticking out of here if you'd like. So That's a great idea. Yeah, that's – well, they were saying that you should put notes in there. Like so yesterday I was thinking like I'll give this to Win with some chocolates. And they said, no, put little notes in there. Like you'll give them a back massage and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then there was more and more. So I Win actually watched the show and he looked at me and he said – I can't wait for Valentine's Day. So he thinks all that's going in here. <laughs> that's awesome. Or you could use it as like a messenger system. You could put little notes to each other and just hand it off every day. Say, here's your lip for the day. And oh my gosh, Jerry. Like, I love you. Have a great day. I love that idea. Cause I got two of them. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> and then you can hide in the game of like, where's the lips? <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely, oh no. This is going to turn into. I think uh, this is going to make a really good annual. Where's the lips? I like that. All right. Yeah, speaking we of lips, make a new holiday called Easter time. So it's it's like hiding the eggs for Easter, but yet you've got the Valentine's lips. So I love that. I love that. All right. So where do you want to start? Speaking of lips. <laughs> yeah. Um, wait. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. So um, what I'd like to do, I want to start uh, with Scan and Cut. A lot of people may not know what Scan and Cut is. Scan and Cut is a home cutting machine. 
Um, it can cut up to three millimeters of, of material. It can cut felt, it can cut wool, it can cut leather, balsa wood, um, just about anything you can throw at it. That's I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how it can cut like a little sheet of concrete. But once I figure that out, uh, <laughs> but until then it cuts just about everything else that's three millimeters. So paper, of course. So those of you who do paper crafting, this would be a wonderful tool to have. That would be very cool. Yeah. So where I wanna to start today is, um, I wanna start with um, just talking a little bit about Scan and Cut. What I love about them, now I'm a brother educator, of course. So I'm gonna talk about brother products cause that's what I know and love. And before I came to brother, I was using brother products cause I loved them. So it just is a great fit for me. One thing that I love about Scan and Cut is it is a standalone machine. What that means is you do not have to have software to run it. It has like hundreds of patterns inside already, also has quilt blocks. So you quilters who are thinking, I would never use this. Oh yes, you will. Cause there's quilt blocks built in as well. So you can cut out all of your fabric, take it to your machine. Um, I know some people have arthritis problems. Scan and cut is great for that. Cause you can also import patterns and you can scan patterns. That's why it's called scan and cut. You can scan patterns and cut them out. So if you're having some, some arthritic issues uh, and it's hard for you to cut, scan a cut may be the way for you to go. Um, now, I, I said that you don't have to use software with it. It is a standalone unit. However, if you wanna really expand the possibilities and really delve into some more, um, maybe you wanna uh, just kind of bite into a little bit more, have a little more advanced features, or you wanna customize a little bit more, there is an option called Canvas Workspace. That is software, it's free, 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 free software. You don't have to pay for it. Um, once you have your scan and cut, you're gonna go to Canvas Workspace and you'll sign up, it's free to do so. You're going to input all the uh, information on your machine. And what, it, what that means is uh, Canvas Workspace will work wirelessly with your scan and cut. So it will send designs, anything that you create in Workspace, you can wirelessly send, yes, wirelessly, send over to your scan and cut. As long as your computer and your, uh, can't, your scan and cut are on the same network. So they'll talk to each other. And the reason why you wanna input your own for information for your machine is because you don't wanna send your project to your neighbor's machine and now they think their scan and cut is haunted because it's gonna start working. So you <laughs> so you just wanna make sure that- I'm sorry, I think that would be so much fun. <laughs> Oh, oh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a real prankster, so I'm a jokester. So I would be the first one to send a, a design over to my neighbor, just like mm. Jerry. Did you send a design? No, no, I didn't. Not at all. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm going to bring up uh, Canvas Workspace real quick, just so they those that have never seen it. I know you're going to be going there, but the, here you go. Yeah. This is it. CanvasWorkspace.com. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that awesome? So you'll again, it's free. You just sign up. You just have to register and uh, register your machine. Um, and just, you know, that makes sense just so your designs get sent to your machine. Um, and then off you go. And what's really awesome about uh, projects, you know, I hear a lot is, you know, I, okay, I have the machine. What do I, you know, where do I go? What do I do? There's a lot of great tutorials um, out there as well. But if you go to Canvas Workspace, there's a whole myriad of free projects for you to do. So, I mean, there's like gift boxes and cards and there they are. There look, they at are. All, look at all the amazing designs there. Look at all that. They're for holidays, they're for you name it. I mean, look at this. There's just pages of free projects for you. Um, oh gosh, this is fantastic. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So if you just want to start somewhere, pick a project that you really like. Because, you know, I always say pick something you love. If you just, if you're going to do something just as a utility, it's not going to be fun. Pick something that you, that really, really speaks to you. Um, and you'll have more fun doing it. And you'll learn more by doing that. So I've chosen a project today. The card that I've chosen is one of the Canvas Workspace projects. Um, and I've tweaked it a little bit, which you can always do as well. And I think Angela, you're gonna talk about scanning with the Luminaire. You can certainly do that with this card as well. Um, you could scan into my design center and really change. You could add stitching on top of the hearts. You could add stitching in the background with some of the fill patterns, but um, you can certainly customize this however you like. So there's a project that we're gonna do. And what I wanna show you is, you know, it's probably better Angela if you just show it here instead of me using my camera. <laughs> oh, sure, you can walk me through it. I'm, I make a... I listen well. <laughs> I'll just talk it through here. So, 
she what what Angela did is she clicked on the Valentine's card, and this is what's going to pop up right here, right Boom. there. So now what you're seeing is you're getting a good picture of the project itself. Um, you're also going to get, I believe I see on the top right of your screen, there's a video as well showing, you know, walking you through a video, walking you through the project. There you go. Oh, yeah. And there we go. Shows you what to do, how to do it. I'll turn that off for now. So again, these projects are great because they step you through and they help you step by step of how to learn your machine. There's also something called a recipe, the recipe cards. And those are PDF files with the written directions as well. So if, you, if you're if you more um, tactile where you need to hold something like a set of directions, there's also written directions for you. And that goes hand in hand with the videos as well. Then on the lower left-hand side, as you see, you see all the parts all the parts that, that comprise this card. And as you can see, it looks really effective, but there aren't that many parts. So it, this can really go together quickly. So if you need a last minute gift, this is awesome. Um, and if you'll notice some of these cards in the big box stores can be upwards, you know, these three dimensional type cards, they can be $10, $10 for a card. Do you know how much paper and little, um, uh, you know, ephemera that you could buy to really jazz up your card for ten dollars. You can buy that. A just lot. happened. I just, I just bought a card. Believe it or not, with everything I do on the scan cut, I bought a card. I needed a last minute card. I got to the register. I thought it was a. I thought maybe it was a mistake. Like, no, I only wanted one card. <laughs> no, it, I think it was nine dollars and fifty cents or something like that. You should not have to finance a card. I mean, it's <laughs> getting ridiculous how much. There, um, would, you want this card? Please fill out this loan application. We'll. <laughs> So, you know, you've seen the ones with all the crystals and all the stitching on it and the, the more three-dimensional ones. You can make those yourself very easily. And again, for $10, you can buy, you can go in and buy a bunch of paper and, and rhinestones and mm -hmm. really jazz up your cards for very little effort. Um, as you can see, this is a very simple, basic card. And again, you can really go crazy and jazz this up. So I, I had little... Um, like little uh, little adhesive hearts and crystals that I put on mine. Very simple. I only put a few of them on there. They were very inexpensive. Um, and if you get them on sale, all the better. So, I mean, it just really, you know, a scan, scan and cut is great for cards. Again, it's great for fabric or leather. You could make these hearts out of red leather if you wanted. I think that would look really Ooh. cool. Um, so you can really, you can really go crazy. you the, the only limit is your imagination. So actually I have some red sparkling vinyl. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. Vinyl would work. Heat transfer vinyl or even, you know, anything, um, that you could do. So yeah, this is great. And the nice thing about the hearts too, is, you know, being paper, you can put an iron on this and I'm going to explain how, um, you could put like a paper back to webbing or I, I like the brother contact applique contact sheet. Um, which is which is a paperback fusible product. Um, and you can just set your hearts down, maybe use a, just a little bit of uh, a glue stick on the back to just basically stick it down and hit it with your iron, just a, a low iron to melt the adhesive. And now it's stuck to your card. So now you're, you're able to get fabric onto your card. And I'll explain that as we get into it. Um, so it's really... <laughs> It's really versatile. It's really amazing. And again, you're, you're going to make your first card and you're going to be like, why have I been spending so much money? On these <laughs> <laughs> and you can customize them. You can, you know, the scan and cut doesn't just cut. It also draws, it embosses. So you can really create everything. And I'm going to show you how, how it draws as well and cuts at the same time. So, um, you know, again, you're going to, you're just going to be like, why have I been spending this much money? <laughs> Uh, exactly. So Jerry, can I just go ahead and download this then? You can. So what you're going to do is um, you're going to take that file and you're going to export it. You're just going to hit, you know how everybody knows how to use the file option in the upper left-hand corner of your computer. Um, just hit file. And then one of the uh, menu options is going to be export. And you're just going to export it. And you're gonna, it's going to ask you um, how you want to do that. You can use a USB if you want. You can use uh, a hard wire if you like. But it's also going to give you the option to transfer the design wirelessly. And uh, so that's what you're going to do. So the first part, just so everybody understood, the first part is I downloaded the PDF in case you guys were wondering what the heck that was. This right. is the PDF that comes with it, which is great directions here, by the way. 
Yeah, for there's to see. It's four or five pages of directions. Yeah. So it, and really, it really allows you um, to be able to, to really dig in and it makes sense and it makes it um, really nice for you, very clear clear directions. So again, and you're just going to export, you're just going to touch, uh, once you, um, Angela, why don't you, do you see the little Be My Valentine? Uh, just that, I think it's the third one. Yeah. Right here? Yep. Oh, yeah. Download parts. Yep. Oh, there. Exactly what to do. So yours looks a little different than mine because I think it's just different computers, but um, it'll walk you through exactly how to transfer. So again, you can use a USB if you want, but in this case, we're gonna go wirelessly. And what she would do is trans transfer it wirelessly that way. It'll send it right to your machine. Remember, this is why you want to have your machine and your computer on the same network so they talk to each other. Oh my gosh, that's so easy. Yeah. It's very fast. So again, you can you know you can work on on customizing this as much as you want, and then wirelessly, boop, just shoot it right over to your scan and cut, um, and it'll automatically show up. So I've just done that as we were talking. I pulled it up on my end and I sent it over to my scan and cut. So why don't we go over to the? I'm gonna switch my camera. We'll go over to the scan and cut, and Sounds uh, good. we'll start from there. All right, I'll see you at the scan and cut. So for those that I saw a couple of people asking questions and we will make sure that we answer a lot of those. I just didn't want to interrupt in the middle. So this is so simple, very simple. I mean, I could even do it, but although I am a little bit technical, technologically advanced, I just can't remember my name today. That's the problem. <laughs> but anyways, I see some of your questions. So please know I see those and I will answer those or Jerry and I will. So he's getting his scan and cut hooked up in the meantime. And also I did include the blog down below. This is the crafting blog.scanandcut.com, which is a little different than the brother sews one that I always send you to. So make sure you pop in there. There's a lot of great projects. So, and I think Jerry's just about ready. Yep. Hey, I see the scan and cut. There's a scan and cut. Now this is your main screen. Okay. So let me get out of here. Here's your main screen. So hopefully you all can see this. I apologize, I've got a very small sewing room and very limited space for my camera. So I'll do the best I can. So here's where, um, here's your main screen. This has all of your information right here. So now the design that, that you just transferred over to your machine is in here, but where are you gonna go find it? The lower left-hand corner, it says retrieve data. So that's what I wanna touch. And here's that little icon that showed up on your uh, Canvas workspace. So you're going to touch that. It's going to so, take a hey, second. Jerry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I, I was going to answer this, but I want to just be clear. Somebody had said, do you have to have your scan and cut on when you transfer it? I would just assume yes, but I mean, how else is it transferred? <laughs> well, you figure you're, you're going to have it on because you're going to transfer it anyway. Um, you don't have to. I've done it where I've sent it over and then I've turned my, my canvas on and or uh, my scan and cut on and it picks it up. Oh, so it okay. depends on your network. Um, it depends on several things. So let me see if I can get in here a little bit closer. Oh, that's better. There it is. Perfect. So now you'll see up here. I know it's 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 a little hard to see on camera, but there's the be my Valentine. So now what I need to do is I'm <laughs> really, folks, I'm ready to go. So it's going to in in this little file here is the draw file and the cut file. So all I have to do, there's a little icon here. It's wanting me to scan. I want to scan my mat uh, that has my fabric or my uh, cardstock on it because um, I need to know where to place that design. So let me go ahead and move you back just a little. I'll try to go slowly so we don't have the, I call it the love boat syndrome. So <laughs> you need Dramamine just to be able to deal with it. Okay. So there we go. Here's my mat. Now this is a just a low tack adhesive mat. There are several that are available. There's a low tack, a standard mat, um, a high tack. Now we also have, and I want to kind of show this off. It's the gold stripe. This is the brand new fabric mat. What this is for is specifically for fabric. It has the fabric sheet already attached to the mat. So if you wanted to cut out any fabric, this is fabulous for that. So this already has that all attached, so you don't have to take up another another mat. So this is my low tech. I like to use this for, um, I kind of start with this just to see, make sure all my cardstock um, doesn't stick to the mat. Um, so you don't really want to use cardstock with a fabric mat because it will, it will stick it down. I always start with a low tech and it's got a protective sheet on here. And this exposes the adhesive. Now, all you have to do you can, you don't have to fill this entire mat with material. 
you could do a little section. So that's why I say save your scraps. So any little pieces like this, you can stick that down because over at your machine, you can move where the design goes. So let me go ahead and take some paper. So here I have a piece of paper um, that has some designs on it. Now, if you notice, I've already cut out the Be My Valentine part, but again, kind of get out of your box a little bit. Don't look at this as one whole piece of paper, break it up into parts. Maybe you just want to take out the beauty queen part or the pure perfume part. For me, I liked the colors. So I'm going to use this uh, for just the colors. And I'm going to lay it on my mat and I'm going to take a brayer. You could use your hand, but I like to use uh, a brayer. This is a brother brayer, scan and cut brayer. And I'm just gonna push lightly just to make sure that that paper is stuck down really well on that mat. There we go, that simple. Now I'm going to take my mat and I'm going to load it into my machine. Sherry, which uh, which version of the scan and cut are you using there? This is the 225. This is one of the new ones. There's also a 230, which also has Disney in it. So if you really love Disney and you really want to work with Disney, the 230 has Disney designs already built into it. Um, and what's nice about the scan and cut is you can use a six foot roll feeder. So if you wanted to do six feet of vinyl, you could do that or yeah. six feet of paper, you could do it. Vinyl's, vinyl's easier because it's it's already in the roll. So, all right, so now I have, uh, I've, I've loaded my mat. Yes, Sandra. It so is. now I'm scan. So what it's gonna, you remember this is called scan and cut. So I'm gonna scan my mat. And what it's doing is my machine is taking a picture of what is in the mat, what is on my mat. And I'll show you, I'll move in closer. Once it's done, just takes a second. Oop, and there it is. So let me go ahead and very slowly move you back over to my screen. Try to do this as slow as I can. There we go. And there you have a picture. You can see exactly the paper that I did. Isn't that the coolest thing? Because now I can take my design and I can move this anywhere that I want to on my paper. I can come down here, I can come over here, but I'm gonna place it right up here and uh, because I just want it on the pink. And then I'm gonna press okay. And now you notice my paper has disappeared, but it doesn't matter because it's already scanned. It's just showing me the design. So now it's asking me, okay, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna cut, draw, emboss? You can foil with this machine. You can do paper piercing. But in my case, I want to draw. So I'm going to touch draw and it's ready to start. But now I need to, if you notice, the box disappeared. So just the Be My Valentine is showing. That means that's the draw file. Now I'm going to pull back again just a little because I want to show you a very cool tool that is part of uh, an optional part of the scan and cut. So this is something called the. Um, uh, this is the uh, small barrel pen holder. Now, the scan and cut comes with various pens for you to use. In a little package, comes with your scan and cut, but you can also use markers or any kind of pens with this universal pen holder. Now, this will hold pens up to um, like 7.8 millimeters to 9.6 millimeters. So you can, um, you can load in a pen into this holder and you can use that, you know, any markers that you may have as long as they, it's the correct diameter. So in this case, I'm using one of these um, like little permanent markers and these work really well in there as well. Now you want to test it, make sure it's working, which it is. So all you have to do is place, you just have to place the pen holder into the holder and you're going to place your pen down in, now this is the coolest thing. So I'll try to get in here a little bit, but if you notice, the tip of the pen is touching the bottom of this tool. What that does is it sets the pen for the perfect height for this, uh, for this holder. All I have to do is take the gray section here, twist it until it's tight, let it go, and it snaps into place, remove the pen, and now my pen is at the exact height for this particular holder. I'm just going to bring it over here, place it into my holder, 
lock it in. And that's it. Now all I have to do is come over to my screen, press start. And now what's going to happen is my machine will move into position to exactly where I told it to draw. And all that is, it even tells you how long it'll take. In this case, it says a minute, but that just means a minute or less. Um, and once it's done, it's going to draw the outline of the design. And so what you're going to do is you're going to, I'll see my, my ink is empty, uh, my bowl. So what you're going to get is this. And let me put this on a white piece of paper. I'm going to unload it. And this is what you'll get. So you'll get the Be My Valentine. There we go. The Be My Valentine. I love that. It draws in. And then what you'll do is you're going to cut Right after that, it's finished drawing. I'm going to reload my mat. Now I just place the blade in, lock it into place. I'm going to select cut. There's my little box. I'm going to touch start. And now it will cut that rectangle out. So that quickly, I mean, it really took longer for me to explain it than it does to do it. <laughs> it's that fast. And what's nice about the auto blade, this, this has an auto blade now. So what that means is it will automatically detect the height of whatever it is you have loaded on your mat. So you don't have to fuss with um, like heights or pressure or anything like that. It does it automatically for you. And if you notice, once I peel that off, there's my rectangle. That looks great. And you know, uh, Jerry, there's just a couple of people were asking about, they have an older scan and cut. So you, they, they were saying, can you use these mats? Well, you could still buy mats for your scan and cut. You just contact your local brother dealer, but Correct. this newer scan and cut has the auto cut blade, which is different than the old, if you're talking the old, old one. Right. One. Yeah. Like the 125, which is still an awesome machine, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have the auto blade technology. So you're going to have to, to adjust the cut pressure and you're gonna to have to twist the blade to get the blade height correct. So what's really nice about this auto blade was um, it's just so fast because it automatically detects what the height is by itself. You don't have to do any kind of manual adjusting. Which is great. Yeah. So then what you do is you are gonna go ahead and you're gonna cut out all your parts um, just, as, just as it shows on your Canvas workspace. So you'll take your, your piece of fabrics and you'll lay them on your mat and you will cut them out. Now, here's a little hint. And let me put this on the white so you can see it easier. When you're done, you're gonna have the negative. Don't throw this out because now you can square this up and you could put a piece of fabric behind there or a piece of uh, paper behind there. And you can use this again, because again, this has a contact sheet on it. So you could use this on a quilt um, as, as an applique, like a reverse applique. You could stitch around the heart if you like. So don't throw these out. You can use these. And here's the other the other part that I did. So that's kind of a tip too. Don't throw these out. These are still good. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm notorious for saving little scraps. You can do little teeny tiny scraps on your scan and cut. And I've got scraps all over the place because <laughs> because you can again you can scan it in and put that design exactly where you want it. So if you have a tiny little circle, all you need is a little tiny scrap of fabric or paper. So I'm going to, um, Angela, I'm going to go back to the machine now. So I'm going to okay. switch my camera. While he's switching, I'll just answer a couple of these. So Kathleen and a couple of you had asked about the mats. So there's a new fabric mat that does not work on the older models. And so, oh, here comes Jerry. I'll bring him up here. So they're asking, will the machine automatically know if you're using the wrong mat or will it automatically know what you're using? So that's kind of like a two-way question. <laughs> yeah, it'll 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 definitely tell you. Um, it will, if you try to use the new scan and cut mats on the older models, it'll say you can't use that mat. Um, and vice versa, if you use the older mats on the new one, it'll say, no, you can't do that. Um, because it's more, the new one is actually a little more accurate. So it's really looking for the perfect mat to give it the perfect setting. Right. And Marion, no, you cannot use the fabric mat on the older, the old, old one. Yeah, I wish, but I, I get it. I get why. It's new <laughs> technology. The, the new the new scan and cuts have newer technology, so they need newer mats. So um, Brenda, this is the 225 DX. 
Um, again, there's a 230 DX. So if you are really, the 230 has all the Disney's built in. So if you if you want to cut it, if you love Disney um, or, or your children or grandchildren love Disney and you do a lot of Disney products, man, you can, if you have a Luminaire or you have a Disney machine that, uh, a brother machine that has Disney in it, you could use that along with the scan and cut Disney model. Oh my gosh, you could just be yeah. so creative with that. That is so easy, so fun and so easy. And you did that so quickly. I know, like I said, what, what took the longest was me explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna switch my camera here real quick. Okay, while he's switching his camera, I, that he's switching his camera, I just have to tell you guys, those, yesterday I told you I was gonna scan in those lips. So, so far what I have finished is I took what I sewed and I traced it onto a piece of paper so this is a white piece of paper. I didn't trace it onto the scanning mat. And it's all ready for my luminaire to scan in and turn into an embroidered in the hoop project. So, oh, he's back. Bring Boy, did you, did you catch what Angela just said? She traced her design and scanned it into her sewing machine. Isn't that incredible? And uh, you can it's like it stitch it. Awesome. It's amazing. You know, awesome. I, I think, here's another tip for the scanner. You know, there's there, we, we all go, well, we used to, <laughs> hopefully we will in the very soon future, but be able to go to all these shows. And there's a lot of vendors that have hand stitching projects and they have hand stitching designs. Um, but, but some people don't like handwork or they don't, they can't do the handwork. Take those hand designs, scan them into your machine and then turn those, they will turn those into stitches. So you can take all of those amazing hand patterns, hand, hand patterns that you would have to trace onto a piece of fabric. Now mm -hmm. you could scan it in and turn those into uh, stitch files. So it does it automatically, so. Absolutely. And I see some more questions for William, but don't worry guys, I'll answer those when he's finished here. So just so you know, I didn't miss them. All right, Jerry, let's take a look at what you got. So we're at my machine, again, just for reference, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be working on. So we went to the scan and cut, we cut out all of our parts, which I have right here. I've got all my parts ready. Um, and this is what we're gonna create. Now they're stitching around the hearts and they're stitching on the Be My Valentine. They're zigzag stitching around this part. Now I won't show you all of this cause it'll take a little too much time uh, because I wanna just kind of do this quickly. But what I'll do is I will get you started and then you'll, you'll kind of understand the concept. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with um, the white card section. And I'm going to try, I looked at this earlier to see if you could see it. Here, let me refocus the card and see if you can see, but there are, ah, there we go. Oh, yeah, it, 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 sorry, I know it's I know it's hard folks, I'm sorry. But what you're seeing is the scan and cut has automatically just put little notches in there that um, show you exact their placement lines. There we go. I think we can see it. Their placement lines for all of the parts, so you know exactly where to place these. So isn't that amazing? I That's love that. Incredible. Love it. So I don't have to guess where this. Is. Ooh, let me refocus. So I don't have to guess where all these parts have to go. So. I'm going to take um, just, you can use, gosh, you can use tape, you can use glue, you can use whatever you want. And I always have just an extra sheet of paper underneath so that I can do the gluing uh, or whichever. You could use tape, you can, you can use whatever you like. But I'm just gonna take a little glue here just to make it quick. Now you would do this better at home. <laughs> I'm just doing it for the sake of, of demoing here. And I can see, I know it's, you probably can't, but um, I can see the outline of my placements. So I'm gonna place my little arrow here first because that's what they want me to put down first. There's my arrow. Now the next thing is going to be the big heart. Now I wanna talk about this just a little bit. Remember I said that you could iron these hearts down. Well, how come you can do that? This is, uh, it's a paperback fusible webbing by Brother. It's called an applique contact sheet. Um, there are other manufacturers that make this type of product, but I really like the Brother one because it's really light. It doesn't gum up your needle. Um, it keeps everything nice and nice and tight. It doesn't, if you notice, it's not, there are no frayed edges. So when you cut it out of your scan and cut, it cuts out perfectly. Um, and I love it. So all you're going to do is take the paper part and you're just going to peel it away. And now, I don't know if you can see, but there's a shininess to it. That's your adhesive side. 
So that's how you know the difference. So you don't want to iron adhesive side up because it'll stick to your iron and create it. <laughs> Missy, ask me how I know. Um, so you'll see. <laughs> Jerry, that's, that's what we call a hot mess, literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you take, what you do is you take one of those foam sponges and you get it wet and you rub a hot iron over it and it'll take all that goop off. There, my tip for the day. <laughs> So um, now you'll you'll be able to see your fabric front. It's going to be very obvious to you that it is shiny on the back. So you'll know which side's down. And again, all I have to do is take my placement stitch here, and I just place my heart down. I'll take this over to my iron and just touch it with my iron, and all that adhesive will melt underneath, and it is now stuck to my project. Just for the sake of demo here, I'm just going to very quickly use some glue. You could use glue as well if you like but I'm going to use, uh, I would normally use this with my iron, but I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna place it. Again, I'm just looking at my placement lines. I'm gonna stick that down and now that part's ready. So I'm gonna take this over to my machine and all I'm using is, I'll show you my screen real quick here. I'm using a straight stitch, let me refocus, just a plain straight stitch. Um, and at the bottom, I have adjusted the side to side, the left right shift so that I've moved my needle over to the left just a little bit because what I'm using is an open toe foot. It's a little hard to see there, but I'm using an open toe. Here, I'm just taking off my machine. It's an open toe, what they call an applique foot. And I like using this foot with this type of project because I can line up the whatever it is I'm stitching around with the edges of the feet. Now this will come <clears throat> come with your um, Luminaire or top, more top of the line machines. It's plastic, but I have a metal one. I don't know why. I just <laughs> it's just one that I've been using, so I use the metal one. But you could use the plastic one as well. Um, and then all that does is it just very quickly attaches to your machine. While you're attaching that foot, I have to say that's one of my favorite feet because you can see. I, I like to see the stitch as it's going, even when I'm sewing in general, top stitching and things like that. Yeah. It's one of my favorite feet. And that's why it's called an applique foot because you're probably going to be using it to go around things, or mm -hmm. even if you're doing a little bit of decorative stitching, um, it just, like you said, it's just a great visual. It helps you see exactly where your stitches are going. Absolutely. So I've got my machine set for a straight stitch. And uh, I am going to stitch around this heart now. And I have got my top thread uh, in my machine is a 40 weight polyester. You are free to use whatever you like. If you want to use a silk thread, if you want to use, you know, a, a 12 weight thread, something a little thicker and chunkier, you can certainly do that. Don't forget to adjust your needle for the size of the thread that you're using. And um, and then I've got my bobbin. I've got the same the same as the top. So this is the same 40 weight polyester as what's in the top. Um, I have lowered my tension just a little bit <clears throat> because you don't really want to, you know, you're adjusting for some thickness. So you don't want to have that thread pull up from the top for, from the bottom. And now uh, it's just a matter of deciding where it is you want to start. So I'm just going to kind of lower my machine here and then lower my needle. Oh, I have to thread my needle first. That would help. <laughs> and now I'm just going to lower it. And now I can wait. So I can just, you know, I'm free to, to rotate this and just kind of have it do whatever I need to do. Jerry, then, what did you lower that tension to, by the way? Uh, like a three. Um, but again, I always, I always say in all my classes, do a test. Test everything first. Um, I am the, the one person in the entire world uh, who hates ripping out stitches more than anyone else. I absolutely <laughs> abhor it. I don't like it. I think it's <laughs> I don't know. I think we could have a vote here with all the brothers sewing family, and they're going to all be like, yeah, least favorite thing, ripping out stitches. I'd love uh, to hear from somebody who loves it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never, I have never heard anyone say, you know, my most favorite thing is to mess up my stitching so I can rip it out. Said no one ever. So never. I, all I'm going to do, and I'll show this to you. I know it's a little hard to see on camera, but all I'm doing is um, now I'm just going to start stitching. And I'm going to go slow. And then what you may need to do is turn on your project every once in a while, especially when you get to a sharp turn. That's kind of a little tip. And it may be that you have to turn, you know, you may have to just kind of slightly adjust every stitch. And that's going to give you that smooth curve. And I'll cut my thread here so you can see it. And you're just going to, I know it's hard to see white on white. 
but <laughs> you're just going to go right around that heart until you're all the way around. Now, the next thing you're going to do is just start building again. Now, you're going to, once you're finished with that, we're going to say, I finished, same thing, take my next heart, backing off, exposing the adhesive, lay it down on my, on my um, placement line. I'm going to stitch, I'm going to glue that down, or I'm going to hit it with my iron. It's so easy to use your iron, but in my case, I'm just going to use just a little dab of glue just for demo. And I'm going to stick that down. And then the same thing, bring it over to my machine. Lower my presser foot so I, the edge of that heart is right up against the edge of that foot. Lower my needle and then just start stitching. Again, you would go all the way around your heart, a little bubble from the glue, um, go all the way around your heart, and you're done with that section. Again, what's taking longer is me explaining it. <laughs> then you'll take the back part of your arrow, the next, the next part of your arrow, and again, I'm just going to do this for, for demonstration purposes, putting a little glue on the back. And then lining it up with the placement line. I love that it cuts out little placement lines for you. So it just makes it so easy. And there you go. And there, your, your top of your card is almost finished. <laughs> so now you're going to take your little Be My Valentine that you created over at the Scan and Cut. Apply a little glue to the back of that. Stick that down. Now I'm not using the adhesive on this, I'm only using glue because I just wanna stick this down enough um, because I'm gonna be stitching on top of that. So again, I'll just keep my straight stitch. I'm gonna switch out my thread from white to red. Hey, while you're switching that out, Jerry, uh, just a couple quick questions that you could probably answer while you're doing that. What size needle are you using right now? Um, this is, you know, this is the amazing thing about this. You don't need to use anything special. This is just a re regular, uh, like I've got an 80-12 sewing needle. I mean, if you're going through something thicker, you might want to go up to a 90. If you're doing something really thin, you may want to bump down to a 70. But I, again, the beauty of this is I'm not doing anything special. I'm not using anything crazy, just a regular needle. But again, do a test, test everything to make sure that it looks exactly the way you want. So now I'm just going to drop that in. <laughs> Jerry, I thought it was your dog snoring. We're having like a massive storm outside. And I was like, oh, here comes the dog. And now I'm looking and uh, hopefully I don't lose power. <laughs> oh, sure. Blame your storm on my dog. I see how it is. <laughs> oh, look so at let that. Me, let me go ahead and, and refocus here. So now you can see, look how quickly that was. Just a line of stitching. You'll do that to the bottom as well. And once you're done with that, you're going to stick it to your card. And again, uh, it's hard to see on camera, but this is the red section that you've that you've cut out of your scan and cut. There are little placement lines here that the scan and cut has cut for you. Put a little adhesive on the back, line it up with those lines. Here, I'll just do it real quick for you. Cut my thread off here. Um, again, you could use tape, you could use scotch tape, you could use double-sided tape, whatever you like. Um, I'm just using glue because it's really fast. You know, whatever, those of you who do paper projects, you, you probably, you know, have your favorite uh, adhesives that you use. And you're just going to stick it down. And there's also little score lines that Scan and Cut has placed for you so that you could just fold it right on the score lines. And there you go. Your top oh is not. Jerry, now, that is so cute. Isn't that cute? So now you can go crazy. And in, in my case, on the scan and cut directions, um, it talks about doing a zigzag around the edge of the card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, so not I, only that, I was just thinking of something. Like when you go to do the zigzag, someone was asking about needles. Keep in mind that the needle size also will make the holes bigger. So if you're trying to make something decorative, maybe you're not even using thread on some of these things. Well, this you would have to have thread. But let's just say on the outside, you want to just have holes. Uh, you can do that. And the bigger the needle is, the bigger your hole. So keep that in yeah. mind, too. So that's almost like a paper piercing type of thing, too. You can set your machine so that the sensors are turned off. 
And you can just do like a, you can paper pierce uh, a design into your project as well. So also you could do that with a lampshade. You could do this, uh, like if you have a thrift shop lampshade or your, your lampshade's a little dated um, <clears throat> and preferably it's a, like a flat shade. You can yeah. take some cards and you could, you could just stitch designs in there um, oh. And then you place that up against your lampshade and you see all the holes through it, so. I love that. We just did a lampshade thing with lace, with a uh, tool wrapped around see? it. But I have this lampshade that has little bears inside of it. I know, just yeah. bear with me, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> and I never thought about doing that because the yeah. lampshade's getting kind of old looking and I didn't want to yeah. get rid of it. That's a great idea, Jerry. Yep, yep. I am just full of tips and tricks for you. <laughs> So I'm going to just kind of scoot over here. I've set my machine for kind of a wide zigzag, nothing fancy, just a regular old zigzag. And again, I can start wherever I want. Let me refocus for you. See a little easier. Um, I can start wherever I want. I know it's tough to see on screen, but I'm going to just do a little bit and show you. Notice how my machine is not bogging down or anything. It's, it's doing this paper beautifully stitching right through it and then I can I can uh, pivot but in this case I'm just gonna cut it just to show you and there's the zigzag stitching right around the edge now again oh you can use gosh, you can use any decorative stitch that you want you can take this into my design center scan this in and you can scan the you can put designs on the hearts on the background you can have it go all the way around um, you can go crazy with this. And so again, what I did is I used some um, crystals uh, right around the edges here, right around being my Valentine. Uh, it's, it might be hard to see, but they're tiny little um, adhesive hearts. Uh, so you could use those. And I mean, you could just go crazy with this. You could just go nuts. But I even absolutely then, see how quick and fast and easy that was. So I mean, just just real fast, quick little project. Maybe you got something you've got to get done. I'll switch my camera over here real quick. Before you switch, Jerry, will you go back to your machine? Some, there's like three yeah. people that wanted to know if you would just show where you changed the tension on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank right you. At the bottom, there's the word tension right there. So uh, if you're free motion quilting, you you also have manual control of your tension. So if you wanted to change it at any time, you could. Um, you can change your tension <clears throat> on any of the stitches. Um, on Brother Machines, when you see a black box like this, that means that's the default. So I have changed the tension on this machine. It is a 4.0. There's the black box. Um, so that's where your tension, but you can go up or down from there. So that's that's exactly where you do it. Here's where you're going to shift your needle left and right. Here's the length of your stitch and then the width. And then there's one more thing while you're over there, because uh, Shelly has a great question here. Uh, yeah. that if she tries to sew without thread, it stops and says that the thread broke. And there's a setting that you have to change. Yeah, you can go into settings and you can turn that sensor off. Turn the, turn the sensor off. Turn the sensor uh, off. There you go. Turn the sensor off. You could also turn your bobbin sensor off as well. So uh, it doesn't, you know, you turn those off and you should be able to sew, should be able to sew without any, I'm not going to guarantee, I don't make guarantees. But <laughs> let me just show you a percent chance, but you go up into the settings section there for I'll that. Just, just a quick little, little tip. So on this machine, there is a camera function. So all you're going to do is touch the camera. And if you notice here, there is a live action shot of, and I'll show you why it's live action. There's my fingers under the needle. I don't advise doing this. So <laughs> just put, <laughs> don't put your finger under the needle. But now when you place your card underneath and you're ready to stitch, you can see exactly how wide that zigzag is. So you can now adjust the stitch to however you like. And you don't have to rip out, which is my least favorite saying in the world. You won't have to rip out stitches. And again, like, like Angela said, once you've made a hole in your card, you're kind of stuck. <laughs> so better to it at first. And now I can see. So now I can adjust the width of the stitch. I can adjust the length. I can make it smaller. I can make it larger. But since I have the camera, I can see. I can audition it, basically. I can audition the stitch and see exactly where I want. So that's kind of a, a nice little feature, too. I love that. Any other questions? Uh, let's, there's a there's a handful more. 
Um, well, at least ones that I didn't miss. But by the way, while you were just talking about that camera feature, I just thought of another feature that you could use on there as well. And that would be with the projector where you can actually see the stitch right on your paper exactly. down there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's so many different options here. You can't like, it, <laughs> it, the bad part is there's so much creativity. You got to hurry up, make up your mind. Or by the time you get your card done, it's not, it's going to be Mother's Day. <laughs> Over. I know it's a little hard to see on camera though, sometimes with the projector, but there's the oh, projector. No, I can see it. So now the stitches are projected onto my project. So I can, again, I have a live, this is exactly how it's going to stitch out. And I can adjust my uh, left and right. I can adjust the length from here. Um, I can adjust the background color. So, I mean, the projector is just in incredible, absolutely incredible. That's awesome. Very right. cool. I love that feature. And I, someone just asked, and I could show on my machine too, if you can, but and you're, while you're right there, can you show, oh, we can see a really good there. Better there. Look at that. There. So now you can shift your design left and right. You can adjust the length <laughs> from here. You can adjust the width. Um, this is where you're going to audition other stitches. Here you can adjust your background color, or you can just turn it off right from here. So amazing. So I, I can- love that. I got so excited, I, ex I threw my glasses. <laughs> so just while you're at your machine though, someone just asked if you would mind going under your settings just to show them what that looks like there. Sure. Uh, to adjust for if they were going to turn the sensors off. Let me see if I can find it. It's right in there. It's going to be, just give me a second here. Upper and bobbin thread sensor. It's on page right there? Four. Upper and bobbin thread sensor. You can't miss it. Page four in the luminaire. It's right there. You just shut it off. And, and you so can do this on other machines too, not just the luminaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, absolutely. But yeah, you can turn those sensors off. And um, I mean, you want them there most of the time. But again, if you're just doing this for decorative and you're not using thread at all, then you don't have to have that. But once you've used it, don't forget to turn it back on. <laughs> Yeah, that would be, that'd be, a, that would not be good. That would not be good, yes, because you'd be wondering, you'd be calling your tech going, my machine is broken, what is going on with my machine? You just forgot totally. to turn it back on. Everyone's saying beautiful card, beautiful card. Oh. All right, come back. You want to come back to us on a regular camera? Sure. All right, see you in a sec. <laughs> I know, Lynn, did you hear that? I Did you hear that? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I totally you are just blown away with this project and the features. You just couldn't help it. I am blown away. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so just a couple of things uh, that I, questions that were way up. I'm not even going to scroll up to ask who said it, but we did the tension. So somebody was mentioning free motion, which you are the master at, and you oh. could definitely do free motion on here. Oh, oh, absolutely you could. Sure, you could do free motion all over your card if you wanted to. Um, sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think just someone asked, what's the newest machine for brothers? Is it the Luminaire or the Stellaire? The Luminaire is the newest, but the Stellaire is a great machine, a little bit less expensive and does a lot of the things we showed you except for the projector and a few things like that. But you could still do the project. Yeah. You've got the scanner available to you. You've got my design center. So you could really customize your, your projects. Um, there's a Luminaire 1 and a Luminaire 2. The Luminaire 2 is the newest model. Um, there is an upgrade for if you have a Luminaire 1, there is an upgrade. Uh, remember, upgrades you pay for, updates are free. There is an upgrade that will turn your Luminaire 1 into a 2. And I highly advise it because the features of the Luminaire 2 are amazing. Mm -hmm. As great as the Luminaire 1 is, the Luminaire 2 is, is even... I mean, I don't know how the, the engineers keep doing it, but they do. <laughs> well, and you know, I, I was listening to a conversation, well, not listening, I guess reading because it was on social, uh, people talking about like, why, uh, I just bought the machine last year, why is there an upgrade this year or why did it change? Well, just think of your computers. I mean, every year, well, actually every month I have an update, but there's updates that keep your machine going. If they found something that makes it run better, those are usually free, the updates. The upgrades or yep. anything else, like, and again, think of a computer, um, I could think of software that I buy and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, wait, I need the better version. You got to upgrade. So, I mean, it just keeps your your machine up to date and up with everything going on. It doesn't mean you have to use it, though. I mean, you don't have to get the upgrades. The updates you want to make sure that you do, though. 
Yes, the updates usually um, it'll fix a little issue that they've probably thought of before you did. <laughs> uh, that the engineers found or the techs found, um, or it just updates, you know, if, if there's a new hoop that's available, it'll update your machine to be able to use that hoop. Um, and another thing too is, you know, upgrades are, are so awesome. And how nice, think of it this way, how nice that Brother doesn't make you buy a new machine every time there's some new features that come out. Um, you usually just have to buy the upgrade which is far less than buying a brand new machine. <laughs> and you get all of these amazing features. So really the other side of this is I'm thankful that Brother does that. Um, you know, it, whenever they come out with something new, again, there's a Luminaire 2 that's out and all the Luminaire 1 owners are going, well, I want some of those features. So they've come up with an upgrade so that, you know, talk to your dealer about pricing because it's all, you know, it's all individual for them. But talk to them about pricing. But I, <laughs> this I can guarantee, it is far less than buying a brand new machine. And thank you, brother, for not making us buy new machines. Every <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Betty, I, I think I understand this, but when you're sewing, how do you get the needle to go down? I'm assuming you're talking about for sewing, you can use the hand wheel, turn it towards yourself. That will yep. get your needle down. And most machines will also have a, a little icon or a little button on the front or, or wherever of their machine that will allow your needle to go up and down. Excellent. Um, I'm just oh, making when using, when using your hand wheel, make sure you always turn it towards you. <laughs> yeah, towards you. Do not, turn, <laughs> do not turn it away from you. It could hurt the mechanism on the inside. I think that was, I think I got most, you answered most of them because a lot of people were asking about the glue and things. And you just said, if you're doing crafting supplies or you're doing any type of craft, just use whatever yeah. glue or tape that you normally use, two sided. Some people prefer glue. Some people prefer tape. It's really all up to you. All Absolutely. You. Just make sure you're doing paper projects that the glue isn't too watery because it will wrinkle the paper. Yeah. So, hey, Brenda, by the way, the Luminaire One does have a projector. You mm -hmm. already have the projector on there. Go look at it. And also, for those of you that have the Luminaire One, there's a great playbook that has a ton of things in it. If you have Luminaire 2, you're probably in my master class, which teaches you how to use it. But check your projector, Brenda, because they're, I mean, check your project. Your Luminaire 1 has a projector. <laughs> it looks like a little cone. There's an icon that looks like a little cone. Yeah. <laughs> Ibby says she loves your workspace. Oh, you're oh, welcome, Brenda. No, I went, you know, it was tough because I went from a 30 by 30 huge space over my garage in my previous house to, to a second bedroom now. So it's 10 by 12. And what's funny is I actually prefer it because what I had to do is I had to whittle down to just those things that I use and love. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm in the industry. I get sent things all the time. And so you have all of this stuff around. Or you go, you know, you yourself, you go to a show and you start buying all the latest notions and things and you never use them. Uh, <laughs> so for me, I got it down to just what I use and I love it. It's very efficient um, and, and I like the smaller space actually it looks so nice and organized too so hey betty what machine do you have because it depends what machine you have some of the machines have an automatic where you can keep where you can automatically make the needle go down uh like on all the way back to gosh the dream machine i believe you yeah. can automatically have the needle go down but it just depends what machine you have and there's an icon on the front of your screen if you have one of those luminaire stellaire and again, you can go into your settings, depending on your machine, you can go into your settings and make it so that automatically will stay down when you stop or, or not, depending. Yeah, or not. Um, if you're doing garments, most of the time you want your needle up when you stop. Um, dep well, depending on the sewer, so. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know, was there a playbook for the Stellaire? Not for the Stellaire yet. Yeah, okay. not yet. Not yet. But you know, Norma, a lot of the things that we show on these Facebook live shows, you can go back and binge watch. We've been doing it since March, <laughs> a lot of them. So if you haven't been here for you know a lot of them, go back and watch because a lot of the things we do here, um, the Still Air has. Now, not necessarily everything on the Luminaire, but a lot of the sewing and features you, that you've seen, we've been using the Dream Machine, all of that can be done on there. So yeah. uh, you can use some of it. <laughs> It's, it's an amazingly powerful machine. There's a lot of bang for the buck on that machine. Mm -hmm. Just making sure. Trying to catch some of the questions too. Uh, oh, Dixie says that when we buy new machines, she'll take our discards. <laughs> Dixie. <laughs> well, I don't get to discard them. I have to turn them back into brother. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ditto on that. <laughs> that's how that works. Oh, Marilyn, that's a good question. What's the difference between the playbook and the owner's manual? That's oh. a good question. Um, the, the difference is I call the playbook the owner's manual on steroids. And here's why. The owner's manual is very cut and dry. It tells you all the utility things you need to do to get your machine to work. What, that, what the playbook does is it takes all of those things and turns them into projects. So now there's all these projects. So, so you read your owner's manual and you go, okay, great. I know how to do that, but how do I apply it? The playbook is where you're going to go apply everything you've learned in the owner's manual. And it's so much fun. <clears throat> there's even a little card, a USB card that has all the videos corresponding to the projects. So if you want to watch videos uh, for, for whatever project you're working on, um, there's videos on the little card. So it's awesome. It is really, really cool. And the projects are really cute. Yeah. Very cute. Well, this was so much fun. Everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Aww. you. <laughs> thank you all. And I'm going to keep working on my, not today, live, but next week I'll finish up showing you how to take my lips. <laughs> my What are we calling them? The traveling lips or something? <laughs> yeah. the, the sisterhood of the traveling lips. <laughs> yes. I'm going to show you how to do this on the Luminaire next week where we can add some stippling. But before we go, I got to just share this um, because I know I have the Scan and Cut blog at the bottom here, but I'm going to bring up here for those of you looking for some fun Valentine projects. Now, this is at blog.brothersos.com. So let me just um, bring this up. I did this uh, on the blog last year. And it's still good because Valentine's is still here. <laughs> and so um, this is all done on the luminaires. So you scanned in the heart, add some stippling. I did this on satin. And I use this because, well, I actually made it for myself. I don't, I know. You got to make yourself things too, right? <laughs> well, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And if I just scroll down here, it gives you all. This is on blog.brothersos.com. You can see you add the stippling, some letters. This was such an easy project to do. Think of it, it's kind of like a mug rug is how I did it. And then at the very end, I had some fabulous, um, oh, what do you call it? This furry, it had beads in it too. So this like furry fringe, fringy stuff with beads. I and I that. added that to the edges, which was kind of a little bit of a pain to sew, but it turned out great. And that was one really fun project that if you go to uh, blog.brothersews.com, that's in there too. So always something, there's always something good and fun on the both of the blogs, the scan and cut one and the other one. So I'll put the that, website that, down below. That's one of those also. projects that looks so like you took so much time to do it. And it really, it, it doesn't, it's, it's very, um, I hate to use the word easy because one person's easy is one person's difficult, but it's about as simple as you can get to, to give a, I mean, doesn't that look it, how much would you pay for that in a store? That's what I always ask myself. How much would I pay for that? Um, I know. That, very Without good. the rings, the rings are mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes, definitely, you got to put a disclaimer on there. Sorry, the rings <laughs> don't come with the project. <laughs> <laughs> a disclaimer. But you know what you just showed today, and so many people have asked about paper crafting. What you just showed, I am definitely on that for Valentine's. If I get it done now, I can get them in the mail. And also, if you make sure you have them the right size, you can buy a package of envelopes that yeah. will fit these cards. So absolutely. Absolutely. And you can even, um, if you want to make it easier, you can get the pre-made cards that already have the fold in them. And you could just take the parts from the scan and cut and just put them on there however you want. So I have a whole box of those. I never even thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, you get I mean, those at any office supply store, they come in packages of 25 or 50, even a hundred. So they have the envelopes and the card. I have a whole box of them. Yeah. What a great idea. Take all your parts from the scan and cut, plop them on there and get them done. And then stitch around it. And if your handwriting isn't so good, throw that in the scan and cut too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think I, we got everyone's questions. They're all saying thank you, thank you. Um, I'm. Oh, thanks, Sandy. I'm making sure I'm not missing any. I know. I'm trying to look too. Oh, Arnell says, "You want <laughs> the lips or the eyelashes?" Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I could maybe put that around. I don't know. Oh, that's definitely. Oh, everybody's loving the shows. Jerry, this was so much fun. So I wish you a happy Valentine's Day if I don't see you. I know it's a week off. And you as well. I'm a little jealous about your shorts in sunny California, but <laughs> Michigan will be there in like four months. 
Yeah, you'll be there. You'll be there soon. It will be there. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. Jerry, thank you. Can't wait to have you back on. And for all the Brothers Sewing and Crafting family and brother, thank you for letting us take over your pages and bring a little creativity and love into your life today. So, all right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone.